Hi guys and welcome back to Star City Tutorials. My name is Joe Picasso and I'll be taking you through today how to convert audio to MIDI. Uh, we're going to do this very, very quickly because I want to keep this short and I want this to be just to the point. Uh, the first thing that this is addressing really is how to take your audio samples, put them into Logic and turn them into um, some kind of MIDI, something that you can effectively play on your keyboard. Rather than having to use this whole uh, play visually thing, we want to play with feel. And so this is how, we, how we're going to do that. So what I've done is I've just brought in, um, I've just loaded up some of my samples here. Just going to find us a kick drum, a snare drum and a cymbal. So let's just see how that sounds. Okay, that's fine. Let's turn the metronome off for the time being. Uh, let's find us a snare or a clap. A clap will do. Let's bring ourselves in a clap. Uh, and let's go back and find ourselves some kind of cymbal. So open hi-hat shall do. And just bring that in there. Okay, fantastic. So now, obviously, if we were trying to build something in here, which abs is absolutely fine, uh, and I know a lot of people that work that way, very, very visual people, this is how we do it. Okay, we'd simply just uh, take a look at the lines in terms of the bars uh, and arrange and arrange as so. Yeah. So if I was trying to create a house beat, for example, this is probably the best way to do it. Yeah, I know from making house uh, that I need to put a snare drum, excuse me, leap. I need to put a snare drum on every other kick drum. So just to do that. Yeah, and I would probably put the hi-hats, the open hi-hats in the middle of uh, all of these, all of these kick drums to give it that real, real housey feel like this. Yeah, quite housey immediately but obviously we're trying to avoid this if you work this way it's fantastic but if you're trying to work how you can make this now feelable this is what we're going to do so the first thing the first way i'm going to show you to do it is probably the simplest way what we're going to do take a brand new audio track you can use the one that you're on but if we're trying to create a very simple midi format for us to go ahead with the best thing to do is put all of these samples on a separate track okay now one rule about this is that you will have to make sure that all of these samples have been cut uh, for example, if these were, if that were my kick drum, which it is, and this is my clap, which it is, but if they were one in the same sample, uh, you know, just started with the kick and the clap, that is going to end up on one physical note on my keyboard, which we don't want. We want to separate these on our keyboard so we can actually play them as drums as we would do any other VST. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to highlight all of these and I'm going to right click go to convert to new sampler track. Now, because I do this quite often, my option is actually at the top. Your option may be somewhere down in the middle here, but the more you do it, logic gets a bit smart and starts to bring it up to the top. So I go to convert to new sampler track, hit the enter button. And now what this does is this generates me an ESX24 uh, plugin, essentially with these sounds upon it. So as soon as that l uploads my uh, uh, my instrument, which is just here, it will mute these for you. And now it's just put them in the same place, but now these are now MIDI. So if I double click, we can actually see the MIDI notes of each part of our thing. So we could, if so inclined, arrange them in here, but that's the same thing we were doing there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this, have a listen to where my kick is. And I'm actually just gonna play something in. So I'm just gonna play this in now. So I'm gonna hit the record button and see what happens. Okay, so excuse my awful timing, but you can see that it's become a MIDI note down at the bottom, completely quantizable. Okay, completely able to change, subject to being able to turn the volume up, etc., etc. It's MIDI. Yeah, it's exactly what we wanted. So that's the first way of doing it. Okay, you can obviously save that when you're done. The second way of doing it is actually um, a little bit more complicated, but gives you a little bit more flexibility, in my opinion. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new software instrument. Just going to come over here and open up. Um, close that. We're going to open up um, UltraBeat, which is a Logic standard plugin. So no issues there, okay? And in UltraBeat, which obviously has its own samples and is its own sequencer, and this is also why it's great to use UltraBeat because you can now put your samples in and then use it as a sequencer on top of all of this. We're gonna go down to drum kits. We're gonna go to drag and drop samples, okay? Which completely clears everything that's there. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our samples. I'm, I can't drag them from here, but what I will do is find them from here. So for example, take my hi-hat. In fact, no, let's go over kick because otherwise it's gonna confuse us all. Go over kick first, 
let's just go for the first one we see bring it into here into this region here as soon as i drop that it's now loaded which now means very very loud but it is there to be played okay the cool thing about this now is i can also edit these as well if i want to change the picture example okay or any other th th things that exist in this i can actually start to edit the sounds of my drums so just to quickly continue let's go back let's add ourselves a clap into there as well see the empty vessel and then we move it in the more we have to select a different sample you see how it becomes empty if i go back to the clap one you see how it's there okay so select an empty sample come up here uh, let's just find ourselves a symbol open hi-hat on this instance as well great so we, now we have uh, open hi-hat clap and kick drum and what we're going to do is i'm just going to play these in sequential order and record these again as I did before just to show you guys how it'll work. So if I press the record button. Okay, and effectively what that's managed to do is that's managed to save all of that data as MIDI once again. And as I said, if I wanted to change any of the sounds in here, uh, for example, I can change those after it's been done, which is the great thing about MIDI. Uh, and one of the reasons why it's very, very useful to know this kind of stuff. So uh, I do hope that's been helpful. As I said, if anyone else has any questions or anything else to ask, please get in touch. Please email info at starcitystudios.co.uk. Of course, you can find me on Twitter at pwinecasso. Uh, otherwise, I will be dropping some more tutorials in the next couple of weeks. So I look forward to hearing from you guys and I will speak to everyone soon. Have a good day. Bye bye.